Welcome to episode 7 of The Six Shifts with Katie Egan Cunningham, Jan Birkins, and Carrie Yates, co authors of Shifting the Balance Six Ways to Bring the Science of Reading into the Upper Elementary Classroom, published by Stenhouse Publishers. In this series, Katie, Jan, and Carrie, along with The Six Shifts' Maggie Thorison, address the six evidence based shifts that teachers can make to bring the science of reading into the upper elementary classroom. Our previous episode focused on the ways we teach fluency. In this episode, the authors talk about the sixth new shift, reimagining independent reading and writing practice. Here we are at our sixth and final shift in this newest Shifting the Balance book. It seems like a really good time to reflect on your hopes for this newest book. You know, when we decided to tackle this project, we knew that current practices were still leaving too many children behind. And so the question that we invite all educators to join us in embracing is what needs to shift in our literacy practices in order to unlock literacy, not just for some children, but for all children. And that's our hope. (laughs) This question about hope is reminding me about how my mom is really into needlepoint. And she made my brother a little sign with the word hope as a reminder to him to find the light in dark times. And your question's Mm -hmm. making me think about that little needlepoint sign Mm -hmm. and the need for all of us who work with children to kindle our sources of light. So my greatest hope for the book is that teachers feel like We've been a source of light for them. Hmm. In tricky times. In shift six, the final shift, you suggest some revisions to traditional independent reading practices in the elementary classroom. What's behind some of your decision making in this shift? You know, throughout the book, we draw on research that shows how becoming an active reader takes skill and motivation. And the fact that our classrooms are filled with energetic, social beings whose skills are as varied as their interest, this intensifies the challenge of making reading practice meaningful. And this includes independent reading. Mm -hmm. And we know that despite our best efforts, most classrooms still have only small handfuls of really strong readers who are truly fired up about reading. So we wanted to offer support for for truly reimagining what meaningful literacy practice could look like for elementary students. Mm -hmm. Reimagining independent practice in the literacy classroom is a theme of this shift. And are you saying we've gotten it all wrong when it comes to independent reading practices? Mm. No. Um, (laughs) And we really plead in the book that please don't think that we're arguing to abandon independent reading. There's a lot that we as a field have gotten right in this area, but there are also some things we've gotten wrong. But misunderstanding one in this shift is that self-selected independent reading is the most important use of time in the literacy classroom. That's where we start this chapter. And when you really dig in, the relationship between lots of time spent with books and becoming a good reader, it's just not as straightforward or direct as a lot of us might have hoped or even believed. So you could say it's more complicated than clear. And then shift six also tackles misunderstanding too. And this is the idea that independent reading and self-selected reading are the same thing. And basically what we found was that if we could make space to stretch our paradigm of independent reading from the more narrow idea that independent reading is always and only a single student reading silently from one self-selected text, then we could make space for a variety of more effective and more science-aligned reading practices. And still, you know, without letting go of, still honoring the research supporting the important power of choice. 
I agree. And there's lots to digest in this last and final shift. What do you hope educators will start with? It's a big question, not just <laughs> you know through the lens of shift six, but also because we're at this point of sort of coming to the end and thinking about all of the shifts across the book. But I know that one of our hopes is that educators will start by just simply bringing an open heart and an open mind to some really honest reflection about current practices. And we definitely hope that that reflection will leave educators feeling truly affirmed in many of their current practices, but also that the reflection will lead to educators just really feeling ready to bravely revise some past practices on behalf of children. I also think whether you're just one teacher reading this book on your own, or you're part of a small book study, or maybe even part of a whole school reading the book, that we're resolute in the idea that momentum just has to start somewhere, however small. And that first step you take can be the very thing that sort of starts a domino chain reaction of next steps for more teachers and for more children to get access. Yeah, absolutely, Katie. So any teacher who decides it's time for a shift can be the person to start the momentum, not just in a classroom, but across a grade or across a whole school. And we've seen that happen with the K through two book. And we hope that this new book will be that for educators as they work to support more proficient readers in K through two or as three through five educators working with children. So it's a collection of potential starting points as we move together on this path to more effective practice on behalf of kids. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, where we hope educators will start. Katie, Jan, and Carrie, thank you for your time and for continually sharing this work with educators as we all continually work to make learning to read easier for children, not harder. Thanks, Maggie. Thank you. Thanks, Maggie. Thank you, listeners, for joining us for this mini podcast series. We hope it's inspired you to embrace the head work and the hard work we talked about across these episodes. You can find Shifting the Balance, Six Ways to Bring the Science of Reading to the Upper Elementary Classroom at stenhouse.com or at Amazon. Follow The Six Shifts on social media. We are at The Six Shifts on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. You can learn about both of the Shifting the Balance books and their companion online courses at thesixshifts.com. The site also has free downloadables related to all 12 shifts. We'd love to hear your feedback. Get in touch with us at marketing at stenhouse.com, and please share this with your colleagues who you think would enjoy listening too. Thanks for listening. <laughs>